Okay, so today's topic is labor at risk in obstetric emergencies, although most of them are fairly rare. Some of them are a little bit more common, and it's important to know how to handle them. It, this, um, these videos will be broken up into small segments so that you can listen to it um, for 10 minutes or 20 minutes at a time, um, and we'll try to keep them brief. Okay, so part one is all about communication and teamwork in OB emergencies very important component. And the first part of that is communication. Communication is really key when it comes to handling an emergency. For this, I'm going to use the format of ISBAR. Um, SBAR is a format, Situation Background Assessment Recommendation. It was pioneered by uh, aviation professionals um, who needed to be able to communicate in emergencies very quickly, very concisely, without leaving anything important out and not putting anything irrelevant in. Um, of course, healthcare, we have to always improve upon something. Um, and so there are various formats, variations on SBAR, SBAR R, which is the second R is for readback, ISBAR, which I've chosen, which stands for identify self and patient, because sometimes in the heat of the moment, you forget to say who you are and where you are and who you're talking about. And those are important things that the provider needs to know. So I just want to give you a tiny bit of background, um, Joint Commission did a survey that 70% of perinatal injury is due to poor communication and poor teamwork um, and systems failure. And that's a very high percentage. I mean, think about all the babies and mothers who could have benefited from better communication, better teamwork. Um, it increases, poor communication also increases the risk of error tenfold. That's very, very important. And I know that's an old statistic from 1995. Um, but it's still relevant um, in terms of, you know, you cannot make an informed decision unless you have the appropriate information. Um, so when you're giving ISBAR to a provider, you call, you identify yourself and patient. This is Mary, I'm calling about Mrs. Smith in room 10. As is for situation, now you have to get right to it. You're not telling a story, you're not giving handoff communication. You are telling the provider right away what it is you're calling for. And you have about eight seconds before that person can no longer attend to what you're saying. And that's where the errors happen. So situation, if your situation is that the patient is in a, you know, fetal distress, that you're seeing something bad on the monitor, say, I'm calling because the strip looks not reassuring. And then you give a little bit of background. Now, the background is not the patient's entire history. It's not what they ate for breakfast. It's not all the other things going on in the unit. It is only those details that support what's going on in that situation right now. So I shut off the pit. I turned her to her side. I gave her oxygen. I gave her fluids. And the baby's still having late decelerations with every contraction and minimal variability. So that's your background. That's enough that they know that you did everything you could as a nurse and the baby still looks kind of crappy um, and they know that it's a category two strip. So your assessment of the situation, the baby's not tolerating labor well. That says what you think is going on. That's what the assessment piece is about. And then finally for our recommendation, um, many nurses have a problem with recommendation because they feel that the provider should know what to do after they've been given the SB and A. Well, not so much. Um, sometimes they do, most often they do, but they know you're calling for a reason and they want you to recommend something in most cases. They can follow your recommendation or not follow it. They can choose an alternative action, but you should tell them why you're calling. Um, so if my recommendation is, I need you to come down here and evaluate this patient, then maybe, you know, maybe they'll come down and say, well, okay, but keep her NPO and, um, have everything ready in case we need to go back for a C-section. Um, the main points of ISBAR is that, is that you want to be brief. Um, you don't have a lot of time to get your point across. This is not, again, a storytelling hour. You are not giving report at the end of your shift. You don't have to give every last detail. Um, stay pertinent. Don't leave out information that's important. Don't put in information that's not important. And stay focused on the patient problem. Um, that's how you communicate effectively in that situation. And next we're going to talk about teamwork. Um, 
labor and delivery is known to be an area where there is a lot of teamwork and often in common emergencies, we kind of all know um, what to do when we start prioritizing and as people enter a room, they'll start taking on roles. Um, but that's not really the ideal way to um, approach teamwork in any healthcare situation. There should be sort of a more um, structured approach. Simulation a lot of times will help towards this um, because if we practice in an emergency, then it becomes very smooth and efficient when uh, the situation actually does arise. Um, so in an OB emergency, important points to remember is that every L&D unit is a team. And that goes all the way from the scrub tech who has to open an OR um, to the head of anesthesia who might be called on to intubate a difficult patient. Nobody is a spectator. There is no place in an emergency for that's not my patient, not among providers, not among nurses, not among anybody. Everybody has a role. Even if your role is to stay out at the desk and watch all of the other patients while everyone else rushes in. And sometimes that is the situation. Or sometimes it's to make phone calls. But everybody has to have a situational awareness of what's going on during an emergency. Um, every team needs a leader. Um, often in an emergency, an OB emergency, if your provider is present, that's the role that they assume and that's appropriate. Um, sometimes the nurse discovers the emergency and has to act in the absence of a provider. And sometimes um, a charge nurse or the assigned nurse will have to be the leader among nursing staff um, and delegate nursing roles within the nursing scope of practice. Um, every leader needs to give clear directions. Somebody help me is not a clear direction. Did anyone call NICU is not a clear direction. You in the yellow scrubs call NICU is a clear direction. Gary, go get the blankets is a clear direction. So when you're giving directions, you need to assign roles to individuals. Don't ask somebody to help and then you know hope that somebody did. It almost never works. Everyone always assumes that the other guy is going to do it. Um, so if you say, you know, Mary, I need you to set up the warmer or open the delivery table, whatever the task is that needs to happen, give eye contact and make sure that that person nods or acknowledges you in some way and then begins the action that you delegated um, and communicate clearly what you need. Don't get the room ready, you know, that that's like a hundred little tasks assign each individual task to a person and do it quickly. Okay, and that concludes the first video.